Join me in crafting a garden story for hashtag journal jigsaw. Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space and today I am on day four of April and I am the treasured page and here we are on this very grungy looking schedule. I've been flicking some paint around because we are doing rustic and grungy so come and join me. This is a collaboration with lots and lots of creators. Something like 60 of us all joining in giving inspiration for your journals and the idea is if you follow along with some of these creators you'll be able to find the link below. You can piece together a journal with lots of different ideas that uh, will help you and support you. You can also use the fabulous kit that has been put together by Rach and Bella Crafts and also and our other creator is Angela Kerr and she has created a kit also. So there are two kits at play here. I've got some and some. I'm going to be doing a rustic and grunge style to show you today. And here is some of the images and ephemera pieces that I will be using from the kit. There's two videos every day. We're partnering up. And my partner is Cara Brandon Creations. So have a look at Cara's take on this project. And what we are doing is hidden garden trinkets. And Cara will be doing bright and shabby. So that is two different styles at play here. You can mix and match and see what you'd like. In this video, I'll be giving you several ideas to go away and play with. And you can do it in a grunge style or a bright and breezy shabby chic style. It Not everybody likes grunge but it can be quite fun to just have a play with some inks and different textured papers. An example here of a grunge style paper which is just some scrunched up packaging paper and then inked over the top using an oxide ink. I think this one was burlap from the Distress range. This is also an oxide. The oxide ink that I'll be using today is ground espresso to give a nice dark edge. So that's what I've got there. Nothing special, just straight out of some packaging and here I've got papers that I've dyed with tea and then I have used some splatters of ink while the paper was wet so that is how I achieved this background piece which then looks very nice layered up with one of the images here from the kit so I'm going to be showing you some of the pages here these are the ones that I've printed out I'm not sure what I'm using yet but I'm just pulled out the darker toned ones to support the grunge. So there's this one here which I really like. I shall be using that one today. And I've got this which I like some of the pictures there. And then I've got these, I think again were Rachel and Bella's. I'm going to put those in. And this one again, Rachel and Bella's. And, and also this one, Rachel and Bella's. Oh, they're also lovely. So And that one as well and definitely this one. So these are pages that I liked. I really like the ephemera bits there and I'm not sure what I will use. Okay, and then I've got two from Angela Kerr's kit. So those are the ones there and I really like the postcards here. I've got some dyed grunge papers and I really liked this one. This is the potting shed. And this is a garden story which is super exciting so anytime I go to the garden it's a, just a relaxation and that is what this should be. So we're just going to have a little potter, a little potter in the garden and we're going to look at the grungy effect that you would see in the garden if you're digging in the soil, if you're getting your hands dirty with nature then that is all supportive of a grunge style and I think that this this is really cute. This is a little file folder that you can cut out, backed with some coffee paper and then made into a little booklet there by sewing it down the middle and then sewing down the outsides. So this is part of the kit, you just cut these pieces out, this one and this one you get too and then I've just sewn them together and sewn round and that has given me this grungy look with some coffee stained paper and then I have inked around the edge with the ground espresso. So this was just an extra idea, it's just showing you what I'm up to here. Uh, we're going to be looking 
looking at hidden trinkets, little hidden things. In order to have hidden things, you need to create hidden spaces. So the first thing that I've done here is a belly band using these floral images. And I've just double backed it onto another piece of paper. And I've put a little strip of raggedy fabric down the side there. And then that is a little secret tuck point that we can put things in. And um, maybe we want to tuck our ephemera holder in there. So straight away we've got some the starts of something interesting in what could be a signature. So we'll just put that in there and we'll see how this plays out. Because it is, it's playtime. It is permission to play. So if you're joining in and just crafting along with me, I am taking a tearing ruler and I'm just going to tear down images that I like. So I've already used that one. I'm going to put that one to one side. I've got a grungy piece of paper here, which it could have been an eco die. I can't really remember. But I think this one was also using some of the ink uh, splatters as well as tea and coffee. But uh, it's really nice to have folded pieces of paper in a grunge style because it does lend itself. To make it easier for ourselves, we want to look for the darker toned ones. So this one, this one, potentially this one. These, these are great. Um, and this one, this looks like it could be Angela's side of the kit, but I don't think it is. These all work together. It could be a blend of the two kits. I can't remember now. I like gardens. They're both lovely. I like gardens. So I'm just going to chat and, and put things together while I chat. So I like this because I want to create a pocket here and I want to go with this top line of that brown line there. So I'm just going to put my ruler, tear it off like that. So we've got this. So for the grunge look, it's really important to go all the way around and get a darker tone on there. You can even just put a little bit more on there just to make it even more grungy. It's just a bit of fun. With my stick glue, I'm now going to put this piece right at the top here. Just get it right up close to the top and stick that down completely. If you're just starting out with junk journaling, a grunge style is very forgiving. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake, if you get ink on something, it just looks like it's meant, it's part of it. The more scruffy, the more, you know, damaged, the better it looks. It just looks interesting. So don't be afraid of scrunching up your papers while you're inking. It's just fun. You can really rebel on this one. You can really just let loose and not have to think about anything precise or neat you can just really have a bit of fun. So for this, it's going to be more of a pocket. I'm going to want to line it up nicely, but I'm going to overlap so that we don't see the edge, so it's going to come up there. And this time, I just want to take the edge of my glue stick and run it around three sides, leaving the top open. Lining it up over here, make sure it just all matches in, but overlapping the top one that we've already put down. And there we are, so now we've got a pocket. I really like the colour tone of this piece of paper and I like the fact that it's folded. So I'm just gonna introduce a little bit more of a colour here, really age this paper. A grunge style is definitely makes you feel like it's old and weathered and distressed. So we want to put that. Grunge doesn't have to mean vintage, but it does mean worn and tattered and tired and distressed. And sometimes we can feel like that as well. So when you're journaling in a creative way and you're having a bit of a tough time of things, sometimes a grunge style can really help you express that. Uh, and it does have definitely has its play. It's definitely fun. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate this piece as it is and we'll see what images we want to put on here from the ephemera kit. I want to decorate this and this here as well. And then this is our writing space. So that's hidden writing space and this is going to be embellished. 
And I'm using a deckled edge rude ruler here just to tear these pieces down just to give a real rough torn edge. Okay, so it's all about the inked edge here, getting rid of the white tear line and bringing in some texture as we sort of scrunch the piece of paper up as we go. Just weathering it, aging it, bringing in some texture, bringing, bringing in the texture, bringing in the stain, bringing in the old, old grunge, uh, old worn torn the worn torn tattered look here so there we go those are quite cool now welly uh, boots are really fab so i think we probably better have those i'm just going to cut those out because they're just really fun just adding a little bit of seam binding down here um, i'm deliberately making it twisted as well so that that just adds interest. I like these so I'm going to just start um, cutting out what looks to me like they could be stamps. This one is anyway so we'll just as we go I'll just do a little wibbly wobbly. I'm not going to do it completely straight because we'll just give it a slight idea that that is a stamp just by using just wiggling the paper and keeping the scissors still but wiggling the paper just to get an interesting textured line just wiggle the paper make sure that you come in onto the brown tone and stay away from the white and then we've got this sort of thing and it looks really cool and then you just go round and give it a dark edge okay i'm having a look at all the little ephemera pieces we've got absolutely loads here i think that i'm going to use these strips for something i've got a little idea there i love the stack of books and i've also got this sheet here which is this one and i want to use this portion of it i've already got some in my mini journal i'm using this section in the middle here and that was the scrap and i love that number four that looks like it could do with an embossing or something and also I have printed this twice and I'm going to take those butterflies and I'm going to mount them on some card and I'm going to like I've done here I've just got this packaging card and I've already backed these onto this packaging card and that has made them nice and sturdy so I've got those they, they came in a set like little three stamps which you saw me cut out so those are now backed so I'm just going to go over with the glue and put that down on some card here I want to just embellish these up a little bit with some ink I'm using a hickory smoke which is a grey and I've just got a little leaf stamp here and I just want to add some detail onto these little images just for a little grunge effect. Um, grunge is all about layers and it's all about altering so where we can just bring a wee bit of extra texture in and something a little bit artistic or making marks on anything. And that's a really nice way to add a grunge appearance to your digital kits so that's quite fun just adding that texture in. There. So on the back of this one I'm just going to add a stamp there. Just add a stamp there for detail on the back of that one. I've also got some jute twine which I think is really nice for a garden theme so I want to take some of this and I'm just going to take a length. It's really thick so I think I can pull some of this out, some of these. So I'm going to just take some of those strands like that. I may only need one. This is going to give me a nice little dangle. This will just give me a nice little embellishment piece to hang off of something so that's one so I'm just muddying up the boots just giving them a little extra grunge so they're not quite so bright and yellow so I've tied that on the back and I've cut it really short I'm just going to hide this I'm going to glue this and hide it under my seam binding here with a little bit of Fabri-Tac 
and glue in this and I'm just bringing that loose seam binding over the top like this so this appears to just be swinging and then when I close that we've got this nice little bit here. Okay, I'm just wanting to emboss these in a clear embossing powder. I'm using the Distress Embossing Dabber, but I've had it such a long time, I'm not convinced that it's coming through. It does tend to get a bit clogged up. It's a very peculiar product. It smells a little bit like um, aniseed or something edible. Um, what I've done in the past is I've picked off the lid and I've been able to paint it on, but. I'm not sure, I'm just going to see how we go, but I do want to see if I can get a nice glaze on these. And failing that, the other thing that I can do, but I haven't got the time for the video to wait for it to dry, would be Nouveau Crystal Drops. That's another option. Um, and you know, resin and all of the things that we've already seen on earlier collaborators' videos uh, for charms and trinkets and things like that uh, we can we can go with the embossing that's a nice quick way of getting a little sheen or if you've got a glaze or a varnish but I'm not sure that this product's going to do it I normally have my Versamark ink pad and that has gone somewhere else tap off the excess yes that actually looks like it's it's covered it I'm using my rusty hinge ink here and I just want to add this rust colour onto the number four here and see if I can get a bit of a depth of colour. Okay, I've taken this section, I'm inking around it and I want to embellish these butterflies with the butterflies that I have here. Alright, I've got my cutting mat and I'm taking my craft knife and I want to cut around this shape ever so slightly to make a flap. So I'm just going to run my knife along this torn edge shape coming right the way round and just cutting on the line where I can see the newspaper print coming down to create an opening which will become a tuck. Now I'm going to focus on my butterflies and what I want to do is put some magnets on here. So I've got these little tiny magnets, I'm going to flip it over. I'm just holding this up to the light so I can see the centre of the butterfly and make a mark there. I'm putting a blob of Fabri-Tac on the two little dots there. I'm putting a magnet on the glue dots that I've put here. Hopefully that should be nice and central. Now I'm gluing down this sheet. I'm going all around the edge. Where I've cut it's going to become a tuck, so I don't want to glue there, but I do want to glue all up here and definitely around the magnets to make sure that they stay in place and just along the top there. Put this page down, I've already inked around the edge and now I've got my butterflies, I'm putting some glue in the centre and now I can see that I need to have it that way up, make sure I get them the right way up. And then I'm just mounting my butterflies over here onto some dictionary paper because it's nice and thin. I'm so excited about the butterflies. They're quite hidden, but they're movable and they can just be there like that. Really, really fun. And so those are my little hidden trinkets because they're a little bit you think they're stuck but they're not so they're movable so you can have them elsewhere in the journal as well and I think that that's really good nice little embellishments there okay now I want to make a hidden paper clip using these two pieces I've got a small paper clip and a scrap of paper okay so I'm folding it in half I'm putting my paper clip in the center and securing it down. I'm folding up one side and wrapping it over and then on the other side I'm folding it up and wrapping it over and then I just want to 
glue down this bit where I've wrapped it round so that is now sealed in there and then I just would like to so there's my paper clip there I'm now going to trim off this part here and there's my little paper clip sandwiched in there so I'm just putting some glue into where my paper clip is inside this little packet like that squash that in and then glue all the way over this side and I'm gluing all the way over this side and putting on the picture and then the same here I just need a stitch or a staple in the top and then that becomes a paper clip Okay, I've got these lolly sticks or popsicle sticks and I have taken these two pieces and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them on here. That can come wrapping over. Okay, and I'll just wrap it round. And now I'm just sticking on an extra scrap of paper here just to cover up those joins. And then I'm adding a sentiment here. And this is a sentiment stick, so that's cool. And you can punch a hole in the wood with your crocodile in theory. So let's just see if we can do that without splitting the wood. There we go. Just adding some dupe twine there. And then that is my little sentiment stick. And that is just a little trinket, a little bit of unexpected intrigue and then it's got a sentiment on the back so I hope that you found fun and value here today with all the little things but I'll just do a little quick flip through now so huge thanks to Bella and Rach from Rach and Bella Crafts and to Angela Kerr for their fantastic collaboration this is my little mini journal sample for you in a grunge style it's been super fun to put together and I will just give you a little flip through of what I've been able to achieve with very few pages and um, just using ephemera pieces and this is first of all a little booklet or certainly it's going to become an ephemera holder I can put in pockets so I can carry on with that as we go through the collaboration so that was keeping everything together and we've got a belly band there and then coming over we've got the pocket that we made and I've also added this little postcard with the squirrel image on the top as a pull out piece and I could have backed that, that's the only thing that I didn't have time to do today. I've got the swinging little trinket piece here and another pocket up here with a flower in it, uh, that's a little journal card uh, or it could even be... Um, that could even be a little booklet, writing booklet. And then over here we've got a little secret bit there with a little garden house. And then this is housing this swing piece here. Down we come, we've got a hidden welly boot there and writing space on this grungy piece of paper. So that's all hidden there. Uh, lots of tucks. And then coming over, I've got three pockets put here with this grunge paper here, writing space or more embellishment or even, you know, something like this could come and live here. And that's that could even link there as well. Uh, and nothing in the pockets at the moment, but it's nice to have empty pockets so that you can fill it. Again, I think I'd like to embellish something here. Plenty more that could have come to embellish over here, maybe some of these, some of these elements, maybe that could have come and lived in there so I can still carry on and work on it. And then this little flip over here with writing space there, little notepad, and another little image there to collage onto, writing space below, ink splatters. And then over here we've got this sewn on piece here which I think looks a bit like a flower pot and then this really cool idea of having the sentiment on a stick and a little bit of jute twine so that was fun and over there some fabric down the side 
and if you can see that that is an embossed number four from the kit everything is from the kit apart from my papers and this is a tuck space here for some more cards to be put in there this was the hidden paper clip trinket there and over we come and that's how it looks on the other side and then of course we have the fun butterfly magnets which can be used elsewhere in the journal if you wanted to put magnets elsewhere it might be quite fun to move them and then a little hidden pocket there for a cute journaling card so I think that there's just some interesting little things there you might like to come and bring into your own journals and uh, have a play and then I've got space for more embellishments and I can tip in some pages and other things as well so that is all how it's looking and then on the back I've just put a little journaling card here in the back which is a nice sewn piece made it look really grungy ripped it and actually put some ink on the edge of that and just had it looking all rustic and grungy as was requested so I hope that that has been of interest and given you some inspirational ideas and just using the little eyelets and all the things that you can embellish paper with you'll find very quickly that you can create something really special, really treasured and these things can be kept for a long time, nice keepsake or they could just be a ephemera, one time use where you fill it in and that's something that you have for the weekend away or for the next week ahead it could be really really fun to just document all the things that you're up to this month so I hope that that's fun and you have a really great collaboration do have a look at the link tree in the description box below and do have a look at Cara Brandon Creations video today use the link below and have a look at her video and see how what she came up with for this same prompt which was hidden trinkets and Rachel Bella Crafts will be back with a video tomorrow and after that you can look out for some more embossing fun with Marie and Corey Denman. So it's really exciting, loads of inspiration coming your way. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm Melanie, do please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for future videos. But above everything else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now.